Hello everyone. In this video clip, I am going to show you how uh, we use the standard normal distribution table. Uh, this topic is actually under the uh, probability distribution. There are two types of probability distribution. For discrete data, it will be in binomial distribution. And for all the continuous data, it, they are under the normal distribution uh, category. So let's see how do we use this one. Now, first of all, let's understand that all the continuous variable uh, data can be represented by the bell curve. So let's look at the bell curve, okay. And what does it mean? Uh, what, what does it mean by this bell curve, yeah? So when we convert all the uh, data into the set score, the standard score, we can uh, sketch this bell curve to represent the data, whereby the x-axis is now our z-axis and our y-axis representing the function of z. Function of z basically is the probability value. Now, you have to understand this bell curve. Uh, first, it is symmetrical. Okay, that means the size of the left hand, uh, left, left curve is equivalent to the, uh, the curve on the other side, okay? So the left equals to the right. And then secondly, uh, the area, the area under the curve or the graph, all right, the part that we shaded, it represents the probability. The probability in this case, uh, based on the normal distribution table that we are using, it is representing the probability greater than our z. Okay. Now, um, if you search the normal distribution table in the internet, you will notice that there are three types of the normal distribution table. Uh, the one that we are using is the upper tail probability. Upper tail probability means the value for any Z score that we are uh, looking, the value that they give us representing the probability on the right tail, or we call it upper tail of our bell curve. Now, some of the uh, normal distribution table given is representing anything less than less than the Z score. That means they give us the area of the left hand side of our Z score. Uh, and another type of normal distribution table representing the probability between the zero and the Z score. Okay, but we stick to the one that we are using which is the upper tail probability. That means we are looking at the, uh, the area on the right side of our that score. Okay, that means, that means on this side, the right side of the bell curve, the probability when our Z score greater than zero, it is 0 0.5. Okay, the size of this uh, upper tail, okay, is 0 0.5. And the size, when I say size, I'm referring to the probability. So any, the probability when our Z score less than zero, it will be 0 0.5 as well. And then probability for all the Z score under the bell curve will equals to one. Okay, so that is the basic idea of the bell curve. Now with that, let's look at our standard normal distribution table. You will notice that, okay, this side is actually our Z score. Okay, the one that I highlight is representing our Z score. That means they are the values on the Z axis, whereby the one in the middle, the one in the middle of this are actually representing the probability, the probability of the right tail, of the upper tail. Okay, understand that part? Now let's see how do we use this one. Okay, 
Let me give you an example. Now, before we can use this uh, normal, standard normal distribution table, we have to uh, change, change the X score. That means the, the normal distribution uh, value, change it to Z score. Okay, with the formula, the Z score can be obtained by taking the, the, the data minus the mean of the data divided by the standard deviation of the data. It could change to the Z score first. So I'm not going to uh, Z, how to change the Z score with, uh, with example. I just want to go straight to how do we find the value when we want to find the probability when Z score greater than a value, for example, like 1.524. Before we use a Z score, my advice to you is always sketch our bell curve. Always. Okay. And label this one as our Z score to remind us all the value that we mark on the Z axis is actually the Z score. And we have the Y axis whereby the Z score. Uh, the one in the middle representing the mean of the standard normal distribution, which is zero. Okay, so where is our 1.524? It is over here. 1.524. All right, so I draw this line long enough so that I want to shape a pill. Because this one, you want us to find the greater than. So greater than is actually, we want to find the probability on the right pill. And just nice. In our probability a standard normal distribution table, the value given is the probability on the upper tail. Okay, so we can just use that right away. Now, so we have to look at 1.524. Where is it? So let's look for 1.5 first. 1.5 is over here. So line, um, it highlight the whole line that is 1.5. And then we have to uh, the second decimal point, the decimal value is two. So 1.52 is here. Two is here. Okay, so the one that is intersecting, okay, the value is 0 0.0643. But don't forget we have the third decimal uh, place, which is four. So four, we have to look at four here. Four. Now, how do we combine these two value? Do you see the word subtract here? That means we have to subtract five. Now, how do we subtract the five? We have to align the five to the most uh, right hand side, yeah? Not in front here, no. Okay, no, it has to be at the back. All right, so we will have 0, 0.0 when you minus. Okay, that we will have 0, 0.638 over here. That means the probability on the upper right tail of the 1.524, it is 0 0.0638. So we found the probability when Z score greater than 1.524, that is 0 0.0638. Another example, when we want to find the probability whereby the Z score is greater than 3.183. Same thing, just sketch the bell curve because we need to know, okay, where do we shape our graph? So where is 3.183? It's actually on the right side of our mean equals to zero. So 3.183. Okay, so what do we want? We want greater than, that means we've got to shape the right tail. So again, Based on our standard normal distribution table, which is representing the upper tail probability. This is what we want. We straight away find 3.183. Now, let's look at 3.1 first. 3.1 is here. All this, okay. Yeah, all this representing 3.1. The second decimal place is 8. So, where is 8? It's over here. Okay, so the value that we are looking at is this. Now, uh, I have to 
erase this part first so that you can see very clearly you have zero point zero you see the uh, the superscript three that means zero point triple zero and then seven three six and next we still have the uh the third decimal place which is three so three that is over here so look down Okay, for the same line, the value is seven. So let's subtract seven and put the seven right at the end of the right hand side. Yeah? So we got to minus it. So when we minus, we will have 0 0.000729. Okay, therefore, this is representing the area, the upper tail area, 0 0.000729. So that's answer our question. Probability when z score greater than 3.183 is 0 0.000729. Okay, now we I'll give you more example. How do we use the standard normal distribution table in the next video clip? So with that, thank you for uh, watching. If you like my video, please click like, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much.